And I just want to take it back to the documentary for a minute because this is an extraordinary piece of access. Justin Wells was there. He was there in Butler when Trump was shot, when Corey Compratori lost his life. And we showed on this program, Selena Zito, um, great Pennsylvania reporter on the ground, hurt, not hurt, but in the moment when people were being hurt. And Justin was in that scrum and got incredible footage that I'd never seen before of Trump after the fact. Here is a little bit of that from, this is episode two uh, of Art of the Surge and a clip of post the Butler assassination attempt. And look what happened to our country. Probably 20 million people. And you know, that's a little bit old that you oh that God. God. Oh God. really chilling stuff. And I mean, Justin must have been in danger there too, obviously. But it's well, just, the, it's the just very thing. rich, Tucker, to hear the Democrats talk about like the danger Trump poses. I'm just so grateful that that, that Justin and the camera crew was there. The editor on this, Neil Edelstein, put it together because I think it exists, I hope for all time, as a documentary record of what happened, because that event has been memory hold completely. I mean, that was fairly mm -hmm. recently, very recently. There's been no systematic effort to explain, understand, rectify why the Secret Service allowed that shooter, which they did, they allowed it intentionally or not on the roof of that building, less than 150 yards away. And the entire event has just sort of disappeared from the public consciousness. And it really matters. It matters like really more than anything that's happened in the last year. The use of violence against a public figure, the Republicans' presidential candidate, um, was allowed. And it, I'm, I'm not surprised by it because this is a group that fetishizes violence. It's one of the reasons they were so happy to welcome the Cheneys into their fold. It's why they have systematically over the past 15 years armed the federal agencies in a way that doesn't make any sense at all. What, you know, how much ammunition have the federal agencies ordered, including you know, the EPA, the IRS? These are not law enforcement agencies. These are not military agencies. Why are they ordering massive amounts of ammunition to be used against whom? Well, they're domestic agencies, so against American citizens. That's the only answer. So why have they politicized not simply the military, not simply the FBI, the DHS, all the intel agencies? Every armed agency has been systematically brought under the control of the Democratic Party. What is that? Well, that's a, that's a distinct focus on violence, on, on the use of force against other American citizens. And now, apparently, um, there has been a, an order from the agencies that would allow the U.S. military to use violence against American citizens. I think that's a fact. So, like, what 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 would explain that? Um, and again, what explains it? The thread that connects all of this: the assassination attempt on Trump, the support for totally pointless foreign wars, whose only effect is to kill people. It's not to advance the ball for the United States in any sense; just to kill people. And then the arming of the federal agencies. It is a fixation on the use of violence for its own sake. And that's not the right doing that. And they can call you a Nazi or a fascist or whatever, use whatever language they want against you. But the truth is, if you judge people by the things that they do, by their actions rather than their words, the violence is coming overwhelmingly from one side and the threats of violence from one side. And I don't think they can obscure that. I mean, I, I, think, I think what I'm saying is not partisan. I think it's a fair representation of reality that anyone who's been paying attention has watched for 15 years. Mm, it's really scary. And the nerve. It is just, scary. The absolute, the absolute nerve to hear her talk about Trump is the threat. And, you know, he's, he's the threat to our country, to our democracy. It's like, okay, literally we've seen the man almost killed twice, at least twice. Yes. Still figuring out what happened that third time. And there's been absolutely no accountability by the Democrats for the incendiary rhetoric around it, for really just ginning people up into a fever around this man. He's still unsafe. We don't have a full accounting for what happened either time, but especially time number one, where he actually did take a bullet. 
Uh, and there's no rolling back of any of their messaging. I mean, they're, they're, now that she's really panicking, Tucker, and she is panicking, she's getting worse. Like, she's getting more irresponsible. So is Walls. So are their surrogates. I mean, they're, they're really putting him in even more danger. And we do have three weeks to go. I mean, they, obviously, if Trump wins, I think they'll at that point ramp up to Secret Service. But it's still not at maximum levels right now. And you have to wonder whether it's by design. Well, no one's been fired. I, I don't understand that. I mean, I've never understood that in all the years I spent 1985 to 2020 living in D.C. in the District of Columbia. I never understood this, and I always resented it, that there were no consequences for failure, whether it was at scale, kill a million people in the Iraq war, help the United States not at all, hurt the United States profoundly, same in Afghanistan, same in Libya, same in Syria. I mean, that's just at the scale of war. That's not even counting all the federal programs that not only didn't work, but hurt people, aggressively hurt people. And not one person is ever punished. And I just don't understand. Like, that's not how you raise your children. It's not how any business works. It's not how life works. You have to force people to take responsibility for the bad things they do, or else you will get a whole lot more bad things. That's the most mm -hmm. obvious lesson of just being alive. And the well, fact what that they say, what, what person, you permit, you promote. That's ex well. That's that's exactly right. Weirdly, I've never heard that phrase, but I'm I got use it from it my from mom. Now on, <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Okay, so in upstate New York in the '70s, like they were on this. A lot and of wisdom. I, I just, yeah, a lot of wisdom, and that's very also, obvious. Also, there was I don't, stop crying, or I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> <laughs> Did she actually say that? Of course, I was the '70s. That's so old school. I. Love that. Good for her. She cared. Go. That's the important Go, thing. Go, Mrs. She Kelly. <laughs> no, my favorite was um, the sign on our kitchen cupboard, which read, uh, lack of planning on your part does not justify an emergency on my part, which that's another that is another truism. Is, Isn't this explaining is, a lot? Oh, I just love that. Well, she sounds like an absolutely awesome person who prepared yes. her children for a productive and happy life, which begins right. with admitting your role in the disaster. And one of the things I hate doing but force myself to do in my life, public and private, is if I make a mistake, I just want to say I made a mistake. I hate doing that. But the second you do it, it's taking out a splinter. It, it you, You've repented. Your conscience is a little bit clearer. Your credibility is much higher with the people around you. And you can move on. And by the way, you learn something in the process. Four years of crushing interest rates, runaway inflation, and reckless government spending. And who's paying the price? You are, my friend. You might have bills stacking up, debt collectors on your back. I've been there. And barely able to keep food on the table. Done with debt can be a way out. They have developed new aggressive strategies designed to get you out of debt permanently without bankruptcy or loans. Done with debt stands between you and your bill collectors. They can go head to head with these creditors, getting balances reduced, interest rates slashed, and penalties stopped. They create a plan to end your debt fast and put more cash in your pocket every month. And right now, Done with Debt is accepting new clients, but you need to act fast. Some credit relief programs expire. Before you even consider making another payment, Consider a visit to donewithdebt.com or call 1-888-322-1054 right now. 1-888-322-1054. Speak with one of their debt relief strategists for free. Just go to donewithdebt.com. That's donewithdebt.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.